You're listening to the My Simplified Life podcast, and this is episode number 221. Welcome to the My Simplified Life podcast, a place where you will learn that your past and even your present don't define your future. Regardless of what stage of life you're in, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams, simplify your life, and start taking action today. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac, and I'm excited to share my stories and life lessons with you while taking you on my own journey. This is my simplified life. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. Today's is special. It is unique and something I have never done before. I am sharing my conversation I had with KTLA's Kirk Hawkins at Zibby's Bookshop, where he actually interviewed me about how to get on podcasts. And after having read the book, he had all kinds of questions and wanted to know about tips. And this was all done in front of people who had came to the bookshop to attend the signing. And I thought it was really worthwhile for you to hear from me in my own words and my thoughts about the book, about podcast guesting, about pitching, best practices. So it's about 35 minutes long, give or take. We talk all about the book, but you're also going to hear the backstory between Kirk and I. We have known each other for over 20 years, but we hadn't seen each other in about 20 years. Uh, We went to college together, and so you will hear all about that, and it was just a ton of fun, so I wanted to be able to share this with you. I'm very grateful to Zibby's Bookshop, to the team that is out there, to Zibby for inviting me to come into the shop and to sign books and have this conversation, and I am so excited to share it with all of you. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for making it out here in the rain to Zibby's Bookshop. We're very excited to celebrate um, how to get on podcasts. I'm Michelle uh, Gogovac, and we're here with uh, Kirk Hawkins as well. So it'll be about 30 minute conversation followed by a Q&A, and then we have plenty of books to purchase and sign as well. So enjoy. Thank you. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for braving the rain <laughs> um, and making your travels down here. Uh, Michelle and I actually, I feel like a logical place to begin this discussion is uh, the fall of 2000 when Michelle and I first met as students at UC Santa Barbara. And we made a vow while we were working in student (laughs) leadership, basically, that one day we would replace Matt Lauer and Katie Couric as hosts of the Today Show. (laughs) And this is our Uh, moment. Yes. This is it. We're live on YouTube. Yes. That Maps clearly, aren't even replaced. That clearly but... <laughs> never happened. It didn't work out that way. Um, but yeah, here we are. And it's inter- and I, I think it's so interesting that, you know, the Today Show, NBC, broadcast television, legacy media, and now we're here pivoting, uh, talking about podcasts, a completely different medium, a completely different, um, you know, sector that I think in at that time, 24-ish years ago, We may not have even envisioned this, but here we are, how to get on podcasts. And so how are you feeling after putting, you know, the book is here. How are you feeling after putting, coming, bringing it together? Now you're on your publicity tour. What, what is that all like? It's surreal. And, you know, going back to podcasts didn't even exist when you're in college. Yeah. Like Facebook existed, but we couldn't even get on it Mm -hmm. because I was just graduating I remember my brother was like, oh, I got this Facebook account. I couldn't. So to come from this full circle, this forward is really interesting. And that this podcast has been around for 20 years, but I didn't know how to even listen to one until 2018. So it's really only becoming popular in the last five, six, seven years. And so it's weird that I just kind of fell into this just as I fell into the career that I had. And it's all kind of worked out beautifully. And well, <laughs> and and we know you from you know while you were working in school, you were working in private aviation, mm-hmm. um, and then eventually you evolved. How did how did podcasts come into your life? <laughs> so I, I worked in corporate aviation for eighteen years. I sold uh-huh. jet fuel, and I, I kept the wealthy flying at cheaper rates. And then I was laid off with my second child, and by then it was my second layoff. So the first one. I worked for a company that I felt was like the creme de la creme in corporate aviation. And so the next company was like, okay, it's not the one that I would want to work for, but I'm, I'm fine with that one. 
And then when I was laid off with that one, because they were acquired, I felt there was nowhere to go because it was just going to be down. Mm. I didn't have the same respect for the other companies that I did. So I felt, okay, what can I do where I can be at home with my kids who were two under two, I can make a living and contribute hi, and do something that changes the world for them. I really wanted to better the world that they were growing up in. And a woman from my birthing class for my first child said, there's this life and business coach. She's starting a podcast. You should listen. I was like, that sounds great. How do I listen to one? And I discovered the purple icon on my phone and I started listening and she said, you know, we'll have a purpose and a passion. And I thought, great, that's what I'm trying to do is find that purpose and that passion. And then she reached out to me and said, well, you keep posting about what I'm saying. So you must like it. Do you want to get me to be on other podcasts? I was like, that's a thing? Yes, please. I would love to do that. And, you know, people ask me all the time, how did you go from 18 years in aviation selling fuel to now podcasts? It's the same thing because it's all relationship based. It is all about 18 years of not loving fuel, but loving the people I worked with, mm -hmm. knowing their birthdays, knowing who was, you know, having a baby, who was getting married. And that's what podcast pitching is too. It's the relationships I have with my clients, the relationships I create with the hosts and bringing them together and being able to say, you know, your story is really important. Let's share it. You have this education that people need to know and this knowledge, let's share it. And by sharing it and having it be accessible to others in a free medium, then we can change the world because we're no longer alone wherever we are on our journey. We can now get free education and knowledge versus buying a course or, you know, having to read all these books or go back to school to learn how to build a business or whatever it is. These are all things that we can get on a podcast. And in addition to that, you can be entertained. There's crime stories, you know, who loves the true crime? It's the number one podcast genre that's out there. Yeah. There's comedy ones. There's something for everyone. And that's what is so beautiful about it. So that's why I feel like I say everywhere in all of my stuff, it says um, your voice has the power to change the world because I believe the podcasts really allow us to do that. And you started with one client mm -hmm. and then it snowballed into many, yes. basically. <laughs> and you become, you become, I don't know if you would call it podcast publicist, but um, I podcast do. PR, yep. podcast. I mean, you you obviously have a title, the podcast matchmaker. I gave um, that to myself. And, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and which is which is spot on. And you're, I mean, it looks like one after another, your business just exploded. It continues to grow and the type of people I work with also continues to evolve. You know, in the beginning, it was a lot of entrepreneurs or coaches, and now it's a lot of authors. I work with a ton of authors mm -hmm. and I also work with nonprofits because, you know, for a nonprofit and whether it's a business or a nonprofit, to have your team members share their story of why do I come to work every day? Why do I feel so passionate about what we are doing as a company, it changes how people interact with your company. Mm -hmm. It allows them to, you know, it resonates. Oh, maybe I should get involved with this nonprofit. Maybe I should become a donor for this nonprofit. And we've seen that. I've seen that with the companies I've worked with. So it, it continues to evolve in who I work with. And then the Rolodex of who my contacts are continues to evolve. So yeah, it, it grows and grows and it, it's great. It's, it's incredible. And, you know, now we're in this world where there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, LinkedIn. There's threads. a need to threads. <laughs> I know, I completely. And there's a couple of others that I follow, but I'm blanking on them too. Mastodon. But they're Mastodon. Social, yeah. <laughs> a couple of like yeah. in the wake of Twitter and the X madness, there were a couple of others that formed too. Uh, so there's, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're, uh, if you own a business, if you're, just a professional in order to stay relevant you need to be constantly posting so i would think that as an entrepreneur or business utilizing podcasts you have um the ability to to basically you do an interview you chop up the interview and you have clips that you can start posting and there's at least one source of content and if it's done by an interviewer it's this you know relevant source of content so it, i feel like in terms of marketing it's a huge opportunity yeah, that, that you're obviously matchmaking people for. We call it repurposing your content. And so it is taking this 30 minute episode, 60 minutes, whatever it is, and creating these smaller chunks out of it. Downloading a transcript, 
taking that transcript and looking at all of the quotes that you said, because I know that for a long time on my Instagram, I was quoting Oprah because Oprah had something good to say. And then I realized, wait, I'm doing all these interviews. I must be saying something good too. So let me start quoting myself. And that's how we become these thought leaders of the experts in our industry and what we know. And it's by promoting ourselves, but doing it in a way where it doesn't feel gross and like, look at me, I'm amazing and I know everything, but instead a, let me educate you on what I know and share what I know. So that way I can help you. And it's being, to me, it's more generous in being in, in your sharing of your knowledge mm -hmm. than it is in trying to be a salesperson or self-promotion because I know those are gross words. Well, it, it's interesting because those are two things that I absolutely want to get into because so, so the book itself, uh, just to cheat here for a second, it's like 173 pages. And that's the arc. So and, it might be different from the, the oh, real one. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So it's, it's more than 100, roughly 170 pages. Mm -hmm. It's an easy read and it's you give us everything that we possibly need to do to get started. And one of the things that you talk about in the book is how important it is to have that mindset when you're putting a podcast together, you're building content is to, you call them like have your freebies in a way ready, mm. but you, cause I was going to say you give like, we don't need to hire you as the podcast matchmaker now <laughs> that's because we think. have, <laughs> because we have the book. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was really my intent with the book was to allow anyone to go out and pitch themselves, mm. to create your speaking topics. It is the intent to create a standard in the podcasting industry because we have no standards. Mm -hmm. It's been around for 20 years, but it's the wild, wild west. Anyone can have a show. Anyone can be interviewed. You can just do it. You yeah. show up, but it, you should have a mic. You should have headphones. There are all of these things you should be doing, but not everybody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like with the book, there's now this set of standards of let's make this the acceptable way to pitch yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's demand that these are the standards. I hear from hosts. I, I posted last week that there was an article in Inc. that was like the best practices of being a podcast guest. And it stopped at the recording. Mm -hmm. And I posted, well, how it doesn't stop at the recording. You have to then share your interview. You have to thank the host. You have to repurpose this. Because I get asked all the time, what's my ROI on an interview? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're not sharing it, then you shouldn't expect any ROI. Right. And the responses I got were, well, as a host, you know, so many guests don't even share and I just can't stand it. And then it came out that Dax Shepard also commented last week that his celebrity guests are not sharing his interviews. And I said, well, if Dax has that problem, then it's no wonder the rest <laughs> of us do, you know. Yeah. Um, but then it goes along today. I actually posted that, you know, forget the, the guest part. How about the hosts who aren't telling the guest when their interview goes live? Yeah. I had four go live last week. Two didn't even tell me, but I have Google alerts and talk Walker alerts set on my name. So that told me you've been mentioned on a podcast. Mm -hmm. If I hadn't known those, then I wouldn't know that these things have gone live. Mm -hmm. So we need these standards. And that's what I want the book to show is this is the right way to do it. If we want this industry to be professional and to give our knowledge and everything away. Because just because I wrote the book doesn't mean that everyone wants to go do this by themselves. Mm -hmm. It takes work, it takes time. And so people will still wanna hire me, which I feel is, you know, it's fine. Whether read the book, I get royalties, right? I'm like, I'm not gonna be selfish about it. That's yeah, a win-win yeah. for me. But I, I would, in the book, I think I say that in the beginning of starting my business, I listened to Amy Porterfield on a podcast. And she said, give as much as you can away for free. Because people who listen will say, if this is what she gives away for free, imagine what she's going to give me if I pay her. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I give as much as I can away for free. You can replicate it all you want. But just as we all have similar stories, sometimes they're all unique because each one of us is unique. So the way I'm going to approach my business is going to be unique from the way you might pitch somebody. Right. So that is why I've given it all away. No, I, and, and we thank you for it and appreciate it. Well, uh, one of the things that I love, and this is just from the very beginning, there's a couple of, there's two aspects, rather than going step-by-step, step, you have to read the book for the step-by-step, step, but you begin and you talk a lot about um, your why and your purpose for why you're doing this, which I think is beautiful and amazing. But, um, and there's an important aspect of that where that's where you want all of your clients to kind of begin their podcasting journey so to speak it's like what 
what is your why why are you what is the reason for doing this and um really kind of delving into that so that they actually have something to pitch themselves about too and at least it seems like that's where the discussion starts or at least how you want people to kind of jump off when they when they start the process it does because even with my clients we're not pitching your product your book or your service we're pitching you the person mm -hmm. no host is going to interview your book so for you to pitch your book of look here's my book it's how to get on podcasts the host doesn't have questions for the book they have questions for me mm -hmm. so i think it's really important that you figure out what is your story why do you want to be known what do you want to be known for What's your journey look like to create these pivots and bring you to where you are today? And that's where you have to start in order to figure out what your speaking topics are and then to be able to pitch yourself to the right audience. Because mm -hmm. if you don't know any of this, then you, you can't pitch yourself. Oh, yeah. And there's an important part of that practice and, and going through that exercise is uh, not feeling bad about self-promotion. Mm -hmm. And I think I've experienced it in social media when I'm promoting not only my the TV side of my life, but also the real estate side of my life, where I I feel uncomfortable um, celebrating wins. Like I closed this amount of properties, or you know I won this award on television. And but you really, in order to still be part of the conversation, you need to do these things. It's it's super important. And so in the book, you spend a considerable amount of time kind of reminding us over and over self promotion, self promotion, self promotion. Why why do you think that is so important? it allows for people who are watching you to know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not self-promotion. It's so it's got a negative connotation, right. you know, for, for you to say, Oh, I, I don't want to say that I won this award. Well, you should, you should be proud of it. You've worked hard to get to where you are. And for people who are following you and watching you, we want to celebrate with you too. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to allow others to see what your journey's been like, how you've gotten to where you are, and then for us to be able to celebrate you and to know that for us as well, that we can do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, I can be that kid from UC Santa Barbara too and be stand, sitting up here with you, <laughs> the Mr. KTLA, you know, and have these conversations. So I think it's really important that we share that knowledge. And I mentioned in the book that one of my clients had said to me, you know, all of these interviews have gone live and it just so happened to be the same week that Roe v. Wade was reversed. And, you know, we all remember those years. And she was like, I, I can't, I can't share this comfortably. I don't feel like I should be telling people that I've made these pivots and this is what I'm doing. And I reminded her that we're in a time where we also need positivity. Yeah. We are so down in the dumps with the media and what we see going on in the world. So for us to listen to her story and hers was a lot of burnout at work. And, you know, how do I, as a manager, how do I talk to, um, you know, my team and how do I make sure that they aren't going to burn out? And so to take all of those stories and turn them into a positive of look at what you can do, mm -hmm. especially in a time when life just sucks. Yeah. Here are some ways that you can do it. You have to share it. Mm -hmm. You owe it to the people that are following you to share that information and that knowledge so that they can go and do something positive in their lives as well. So that's why I feel like it's so important to share the wins, the knowledge, the, you know, this is how I did it kind of stories. Oh, absolutely. And it's interesting, you um, you become, we talk about thought leaders and, and when you think of someone who might be a thought leader or an expert in one way, you have kind of this idea in your mind of who that person is and, you know, were they published by the New York Times? Were they interviewed on, you know, by the Wall Street Journal, or do they speak to Bloomberg on a regular basis? And it's not that sophisticated. It's like you could be, you know, pitch yourself to 10 of these different podcasts and, okay, now you're a thought leader because you've done these interviews and there's an easier way to kind of elevate yourself than having to make that huge jump. And so I feel like um, it's, it's a great way to kind of build your business or build awareness around, you know, spreading your the awareness of your why too. It, seems it like. also allows you to write... The to reach the right people, you know, just because maybe I go on KTLA tomorrow and there's a 30 second spot on me well, are all of the people who are watching at 10 in the morning, really those who want to get on podcasts right. or would I be better off going on a podcast and talking for 30 to 60 minutes to the audience who all wants to know, how do I get on podcasts? I'm much better over there than I am 
although it's nice to be on KTLA. That's just my yeah, example. Yeah. No, but <laughs> if you want to have me on tomorrow, <laughs> I'll change my flight. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's reaching that right audience. And so then that goes into the size of the podcast. Yeah. And, you know, do I have to be on the one with 100,000 yes. listeners? No, because that might not be your ideal audience. They might not care at all about what you have to say. Well, and and, and that was it. You, you bring that up in the book because people look at reviews and they want to pick a podcast based on reviews in some cases. Mm -hmm. And even though I think that's so interesting because the amount of reviews you have doesn't necessarily get the amount of correlate to the plays or li listens that they, they would have too. And it would think, I would think that, um, and any interview is a good interview and it might not necessarily matter how many, I mean, obviously you want as many listeners to tune in as possible, but especially as you're getting started, it might not necessarily, it might not necessarily matter too. And like, so I guess it's a two-part question. Maybe it doesn't matter, but then how do you also determine metrics and and what is a valuable podcast to to pitch yourself to? So I think when we talk about numbers, you know, especially those starting out on the guest side, I've had clients who say, "Well, I have no social media following. Nobody's going to want to talk to me." Mm -hmm. It's not about your numbers. It's about your story and what you have to say. So forget about your numbers, have a presence somewhere because we want you to share those interviews. So show up somewhere, somewhere that you like and somewhere that you can attract the people mm -hmm. that you wanna talk to. But then when we talk about the metrics on the podcasting side, there are reviews, but if you look at Apple, that's only for people who have an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, you can't leave a review. Right. Spotify has a rating system, Podchaser has a rating <laughs> system, but just as with Instagram, where you can buy followers, you can now buy a podcast promoter who's giving you extra downloads or giving you extra reviews. So it's it's completely a mess. And that's why I look at in the template that you get um, in there is to look at all of these numbers, look at every number that there is. And if you really want to go deep, then go look at their Instagram. And if they have 100,000 followers, well, how many likes are they getting? Who's engaging with them? Is it 100,000 people that they bought and only five people are real? It's the same thing with the podcast, you know, and are they sharing the podcast and are people engaging with that? So if you really want to get into it, you have to look at the entire picture and not just the reviews or even the downloads. I know that Apple just last week oh, yeah. kiboshed the, the whole promo promotion part because there were people going out, you would hire them and they would get extra downloads for you. Well, all of a sudden, all of these downloads just tanked in the last week. Oh, wow. And it's because they figured out, oh, <clears throat> this probably isn't a good thing because they're fake numbers. So now you see a lot of these dips going down. And we saw some when there was an iOS update and people were worried, you know, I'm, I'm losing my listeners. Well, no, it's because it wasn't updating properly. So there's just a lot that goes into it to figure out what is the best metric, you know, to be looking at. I say, look at who the host is talking to read the description of the show who is their target audience and does that align with yours and that's really what's the most important whether it's small or big big's always great yes but make sure that it aligns with who you want to reach and you're really underscoring the point uh that you also talk about uh, al along the path is you really have to do your research mm -hmm. you look into who the podcast host is as you're mentioning look find out you know what kind of comments what kind of likes what kind of followers they have and if they're real or not and um and and this all goes into just the work that it takes to pitch someone and you want to pitch very specifically based on you know and i like how you said you casually mentioned oh when i was listening to your podcast the other day you mentioned so this isn't something that you can kind of, you really have to put some time and effort and be really really thorough as you're developing your pitch and specifically reaching out to people too. You should, there is no copy and paste in PR and podcast pitching mm -hmm. is a form of PR. There is a small part and you see that in the book where it's called a skeleton pitch where there's a two or three sentence about you because you're not gonna change, your background's not gonna change. You may copy and paste that, that is fine. But when you reach out to the host, you're going to say, hi Kirk, you know what? I saw you on KTLA last week and your weather report was wrong, but um, <laughs> I really enjoyed happened. the dance that you did and with the makeup artist and right away he's gonna go, oh, she did actually watch yeah. me. And you can tell I did, I watched, yes, I watched. Um, but to connect with the host on that level where it's personal and they know that I couldn't send that same email to you because you're not on KTLA doing a dance, but you are. So 
it, it's really getting personal, looking at their website. I landed an interview, not just for a client, but for myself too. And that's in the book that I read her website and she said, I have Irish twins. I love wine and my husband drinks whiskey. And I went, oh my gosh, it's like talking to myself. I read your website and you are me and I am you. And she goes, well, then let's have an interview. Because she saw that I made that extra effort to actually read her bio. Mm -hmm. It was as simple as that. And it's just taking those small steps and, and just implementing them, getting personal. And I, we haven't even talked about this part yet, but the entire book's related to a dinner party. No, that, that was actually my next, <laughs> no, go for it. I'll just take over from here. No, no. <laughs> we would have worked great together. <laughs> we still can. Yeah. That could be another it's morning show. Yeah. Um, th the whole thing is related to a dinner party because I love dinner parties. And the podcast host is your dinner host. They are inviting you into their home, which is their show. So how do you show up and engage in a conversation where you are present with them. You are not distracted by the emails on you know, your computer. I've had people clicky clacking on an interview. You can hear it. I know you're not fully present. Oh. To actually you know, have done your homework and talk to each other. You, know, you obviously have read the book. You come prepared. I have had guests who have also come prepared that I was completely surprised by. I listened to your episode in which you mentioned this and I thought this and I went, oh, I didn't expect you to, you should, but I didn't expect it. And then to then take that dinner party and how do you say thank you after dinner? Do you write them a, a text in the morning and say that was a great party? Do you write them a handwritten thank you card, which we should all do again because yeah. I love that. You know, did you show up with flowers or a bottle of wine? That's your freebie that you're giving to everybody later, your tips. Do you say thank you? The way you say thank you is by repurposing the interview later, not for 24 hours in your Instagram stories, because that's lazy, but actually putting it up on your website, putting it inside all of your feeds, tagging the host. And that's how you're going to see the ROI, the ripple effect, the, how you're going to reach not just your audience, but now again to your audience. And now you're going to keep tagging and it can go back and forth. And with all the algorithms, nobody's going to see it 50 times. It's always going to be someone new who's seeing it. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to that self-promotion thing. Yes. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just post about it. Don't don't even hesitate. <laughs> and it's not self-promotion if I'm thanking the host. Right. You know, to, right. For me to go. It'll look, make you feel. It this person had the, me on. The nerves and yes. yeah, absolutely. And it's my duty to thank you for inviting me into your home. So mm -hmm. I have to let you all know that Kirk was a great host. So I'm thanking you, and I'm going to tag you, and then you're going to say, "Oh, well, you were a great guest, so I'm going to tag you too." And that's how it's done. And it's just like a dinner party. There's nothing self-promotion about it. It's just the nice way to do things. The dinner party is a really interesting part of the book. You also talk about a chance meeting with um, Richard Branson. Oh, yes. My friend, <laughs> Which Richard. I'm not surprised. <laughs> that, and, and, many, and there's many others. Um, but like it, it, it's neat how you were able to kind of weave that all throughout uh, throughout the uh, our, our the Bible, so to speak. Here, the Bible, that's <laughs> the Bible a good one. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess one question I had too is I, I we might be and getting close to our time. I don't want to like get in trouble, but the Zibby's people. Okay, um, the the one question I had is everyone has a podcast now, and like you said, every possible niche every subject you could possibly think of. Uh, do you think we're ever hit, gonna hit critical mass? Will it become a world where people, you know, people won't engage with podcasts? Is like kind of what is the state of podcasts and where is the future going, do you think? We have not hit the top. Okay. During COVID, we saw it was it went like this because mm -hmm. COVID brought everybody home. So we had people who no longer knew how to listen to their shows. I don't have a commute anymore. I'm not working out. How do I listen to oh. my shows? How do I make that time? They were figuring that out. Then we had hosts who um, were in studios who now couldn't be in the studio and they were at home. And how do I now do that show? And so as everybody figured it out, then it creeped back up. And then we had people go, oh, well, I'm at home now. I can do a podcast too. So we saw a huge influx in podcasts that were created. We've seen it come down again now that we're all back to so what normal life. But what we find is that podcasts take time, money, and consistency. And that's what really weeds a lot of people out who are not willing to put all of that forth. 
a 30 minute episode takes on average four hours to produce. If you have an editor, you're doing your show notes, you're doing your social media, you're doing all of this. And four hours a week is a lot of time for a 30 minute episode and for one person to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. But those who really want to do it are going to stick with it and do it. And so you see those people who are continuing to do that. And I think we'll see more. I think that we've seen that th there's trust built in podcasts. Um, I, I was just doing my newsletter this afternoon and ACAST released a study in October of 2023 that said that 75% of people go to podcasts to get endorsements for whatever product service that they want because they trust the host. And I think that comes down to the fact that for me, for example, I don't have a sponsor. I don't do ads. It's my show. Mm -hmm. I get to say what I want. I get to tell you that I really love this book. I really love this product. I don't have to lie about it. I, I won't tell you what I hate because I don't think that's cool, but I will tell you what I love. And so if you trust me in the sense that I'm going to be honest about what I believe in, what I enjoy, what has worked for me, then you're going to be more apt to go purchase that as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are seeing. That's what advertisers are seeing. Advertising dollars are in the billions in podcasts, and that's only going up by a billion each year. So I don't think it's tapped out. I think there's still a long way to go. I think that we're going to see, especially this year, more on the politics side. Mm -hmm. um, that For better or worse. <laughs> we'll hear from some we want to hear from and probably <laughs> right. some that we don't want to hear from. Right. Um, but, but we'll hear more because people are realizing that podcasts are a, an avenue to get to others. We are listening. On average, you know, most Americans are listening from 12 years old on up. They're listening to podcasts. So you're going to see more and more coming of it. And, and I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. And to follow up on another thing that you mentioned, consistency is so important. Yes. And it seems like with all things marketing, with all things social media in particular, because the you're able to kind of work the al algorithm to your favor if you if you stick with consistency. And so the people that have the discipline and the focus to you know continue to produce or continue to pitch are the ones that seem to really really excel in this space too. And all it takes is a process, you know, to to have your steps written out. So if you want to hire someone to do it for you, they can come in and do it. The Trello board template has literally a checklist so that you know when an episode has gone live. Okay, well, I need to post it on my website. Check. I need to post it on Facebook. Check. Post in all these places so the process is done for you. Mm -hmm. And if you get templates that are already branded to you, you know, there's actually templates in the book that you have access to that you can then put in your own branding with your font and your colors then that's done for you too. And so really it's changing out, you know, the title and the podcast cover art and now you're done. So my whole goal in basically everything I do is to make it simple, make it easy. And if it can be a repeatable process, then put the process in place so that you can easily swap things out and just get it done. The, the, a, a repeatable system, it seems yes. like. Yes. Uh, the, one thing too, with the growth of podcasts, Initially, they were just recorded audio podcasts, and now you're seeing so many more video podcasts, or they are able to accom accomplish both. So what I like in the book is you give some tips and some reminders, maybe in a way, of the importance of being prepared to be on camera. Yes. And that goes for you know how you dress, how you look, how you kind of carry yourself, and to not forget all of those things, because it can have an impact on basically whether or not you'd want to share the content later. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, it can be as simple as was your hair touching your collar and you kept moving oh, yeah. your earrings. And I, I've been on the other end where when I was producing podcasts where you could literally hear the guest every time she moved, her hair was going into yeah. the microphone. So just paying attention to those little things, you know, do you need dangly earrings? No, you're, you should be wearing a headset. So you shouldn't need the pretty earrings anyway. But making sure that you're you're just simply prepared, you know, if it even if it isn't video, but you're seeing each other, mm -hmm. then don't look like you rolled out of bed. You yeah. know, make sure you put forth some sort of an effort. Yeah. Um, and I go into like colors and, you know, what looks good and don't wear I know, too I'm many surprised stripes. That consultants in television news always say jewel tones. And I don't know. You, you mentioned different types of colors. Yes. I feel like not yeah. jewel tones, but like 
I did some research on, on it. There was like yeah. some warm tones and yes. some, yeah. Yes. yes. And I, so I thought that was, uh, that was definitely an In aha. Style Magazine helped on that oh, one. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. I, I quoted them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I didn't mention, I didn't double check the acknowledgement. So it makes <laughs> sense. Um, no, and I thought that was, I thought that was a really, really important and great tip too. Is there anything, I, I, we can probably ask for a Q&A at this point. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you want to point out? I don't think so. I, I try pretty to end, thorough. You're oh, good. good. Okay. Yeah. I try to end every interview with that question. Well, thank so, you. Yeah. yeah. I do have to say hello to Declan and Catherine before yes. I forget that part or <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and we can obviously pick up the book here tonight. Yes. It, any any other information? And, you, and you're going to be signing here today, too. Yes. Okay. I will sign them all. I will personalize them. And we can them. listen to your podcast anywhere podcasts are available. Yes. My Simplified Life. And I think, you know, I'm going to turn this one into... I'm going to ask for that later. I'm going to turn this into an episode. So Good. that way everybody can. We all have the content. Ripple effect. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Thank you all so much for always supporting me and for tuning into this one. Uh, as a reminder, the audiobook and the ebook are now also available. So if you just love hearing me talk to you, go buy the audiobook because you get another six hours of me reading the book to you. And it was a blast to do. I hope that everybody who listens enjoys it. If you have a bookstore that you would like me to come and sign books at, if you want to hear me be in conversation with somebody else, let me know. I absolutely love doing these and it is so much fun. You can also go to the YouTube link that's in the show notes or go to YouTube and check out Zibby's Bookshop to see the full video with the additional Q&A at the end. And again, thank you so much to Zibby's Bookshop, Zibby Owens, and to everyone who attended that night. It was an absolute blast.